torch and missions. All right. Now, I've talked briefly about them upon essentially my first video, which of all things had to be a best of. Now, oh yeah, I forgot something. Random rockers, I hate it. Ah, better. Anyway, I forgot in the, well, no, I didn't last time. I just forgot shades, but anyway, yeah. Well, actually, admission, not admission. Sorry, my bad. This was the fifth full length, I believe. Apparently, there's, I guess, there's an EP, an eight track EP, something called Singles to Love. Uh, but I didn't really view that. I didn't count that for anything. I don't know what that's about, to be honest. But this album, this is the f fifth studio album by this band. They are considered a and labeled under, I believe, sludge metal and stoner rock, sort of, kind of bordering stoner metal. Uh, their style, though, does seem unlike most sludge bands. As of going into deeper into this band's discography, since I first touched upon them around the time of, rec of sort of recommending and putting in my best of the year list, which was that I started this channel on, sadly. Originally started on the Facebook pages, but you know as far as I had recommended this album one of the many albums this one specifically I recommended It was considered a recommendation of sorts and that was of course the album restarter in case you're wondering what it looks like uh, Apparently the I got this with the CD so if that helps You know what it looks like There you go. Go get it. It's also on Bandcamp. I think all their stuff might be on Bandcamp I kind of had to start streaming some of the other records before I got a chance to really and then of course I do have restarter but I've barely listened to it since I do somewhat regret it especially since I wound up having to do bass for a while well I had a band and yeah they were dang good and definitely different I mean you could kind of hear the Baroness and Mastodon what uh, set the standards for but for the most part they go further back than that but and what current bands you know, apparently that some people don't talk about like Red Fang though I don't talk about them as much and I'm not as familiar though I've heard a little bit and it didn't sound too bad though to me I hear this especially more so with this record a little bit more sleep especially the oh, comparisons of Ohm's vocals definitely more alternative metal-ish but more closer in the sense to something like, though not quite as groove centric, it do, uh, at times it does. But I definitely show some slight um, Paige Hamilton y stuff, but it does seem to tend to go a little more grunge oriented, more closer to grunge, and a lot more indie and alternative acts that do play a part towards grunge's influences, more so in the band's. And even to the extent of bands that are technically in the melodic and post-hardcore kind of heavy hardcore elements too, more so in bands like that of the Melvins, Husker Du, and or as uh, it's more definitely I feel more sleep and Melvins oriented. And maybe Caius, maybe some Queens of the Stone Age, early Queens of the Stone Age, um, but more so like that first record. Of Queens of Stone Age is just closer to Caius, so maybe that kind of Queens of Stone Age with maybe some slight tinges of what they would do in the later two albums, maybe a little bit, maybe a little bit of Little Spice to Paralyze, but I mean, but even going as that far and even mentioning that band is sort of stretching it. Though, though it wouldn't surprise me if some of their sonic ideas do tend to show up in some of the later, from certain aspects of later Queens that do work, but. It's definitely more reminiscent of what Sleep started doing lately uh, and what Elder's been doing lately, but not nearly as atmospheric or psychedelic. Uh, though it's, and it seems they do go a little closer to shoegaze in this record, though it's just not like the band hasn't attempted to go that kind of ambient, atmospheric type of thing 
and more so in I believe the title track for the most part as well maybe reminder but I'm not sure but the title the, but for sure changes the final track changes come definitely ends it all I understand what uh, I believe Josh or Simon or whatever his name is that's from that did cover this album do video covering this album on uh, Boehner TV which is a metal channel that does review that lately has been doing far more reviews lately uh, with overkill more which they call overkill reviews not to be confused with the band even though they did one with the band which is kind of funny funny how they handled that um, and with this one they this is their fifth year album they had four albums prior like I already had said with this band we talked about restarter I briefly talked about them and that album was awesome had some awesome bass very and even looking back on it the moments where you do get some awesome bass I think maybe the title track somewhat I'm trying to remember a certain track in the middle of the record I've completely blanked on I for some reason uh, that's very and then has this weird moment where the bass really comes in and just grind it's sort of very grimy if not grindy sort of this weird it's kind of they do come off growly but this time it's but last tracker they were more grindy and to the point where you still hear the distorted guitars yet the bass does pop out a lot more in the mix without overbearing the like somehow they found a proper amount of compre of compression slash saturation slash just without and to where the bass itself just I don't know with, or if the DIs or something were great or something in the mix, but somehow the bass is pops out. It still works without, uh, and it's not. And the, well, the guitars are still. You can tell the guitars where the guitars are and where the bass sounds, especially in certain moments with that record. This one, bass is slightly buried, though it does enough. It doesn't like find ways to thrive out and be. It's come more growly than grindy I would say um, slightly distorted I guess there's a little bit of fuzz somewhat grind uh, it's more growly with a slight hint of fuzz uh, as grindy if not fuzzy it's sort of octave well not as definitely not like grindy with a little fuzz on it it's more growl it's more fuzz with like a slight fuzz to it I, but you bear it's definitely buried in comparison to what they did on Restarter and I've been hearing that they are apparently better a live band than they are in studio which given the studio efforts I've been hearing especially their earlier work finally hearing Torch and Neanderthal a lot of people talk more about their last two albums which I understand in the terms of the fact that they were above Rise Above Their Influences but when they were weren't exactly Rise Above Their Influences in their earlier work they still wore it well in a fun way and though they were you could tell there was something to them harmonic crafts kind of had it but you could tell that it wasn't they weren't wearing them on their sleeve and it seemed like it was more more of a in hindrance than a help but then that all changed with restarter to a degree even though i still believe their earlier works are kind of potentially better than that but if you but I would still definitely put Restarter higher up there, and this record here, with Admissions, is really good as well. Um, even the artwork's crazy. I, I mean, it's Steve Brooks' vocals are very, like I said, uh, very. Uh, some people would probably think they sound like he sounds like Gavin Rosdale, but I'd say he comes off more Paige Hamilton, Cleans with elements and ohms kind of cleans kind of ma blended together with, and has a certain sort of almost Rosdale raspiness to it but I do believe that they do show while well, also still kind of showing some similar kind of more with elements that of raspiness closer to the uh, bassist why am I forgetting the name I need to listen up to more Mastodon so I remember the band most of the band members besides Brent Hines and so and Bill I'm, for, I'm blanking, messing on fans. I'm sorry. <sighs> but anyway, yeah, and I guess it's Hernandez who does the bass on this one, though I don't know if he was involved in the last one, but he was pretty good with that one. 
Jane Brooks and John, John Noonan's guitars are really dang good. Drums are pretty solid, but I don't think they stand out, and the bass doesn't stand out as much. It definitely has a very alternate... Their style, especially in their earlier works, you could tell the Husker Du, Dinosaur Jr., Pixies kind of thing was going on with them. And while also still kind of showing some shoegazy elements, ambience stuff, dream poppy ambience stuff that's kind of reminiscent in places similar to bands along the lines of your My Bloody Valentines, your Slow Dives, your... Why am I blanking on that one band? I had the CD of it and I talked about it on my Facebook and I'm forgetting about it and I apologize what their name is, but they were also a really influential band in Towards Dream Pop and Shoegaze during 1990. Uh, the band also has, according to this thing, they, the band has been comparable in recommendations to that to these bands. Hold on. Let's see if you can see it, you know. Uh, yeah. I don't know on Mud Honey entirely. I wouldn't go as far as Touch Me, I'm Sick kind of a stuff. Maybe some later stuff, but they're not nearly as garage punky, I would say. Maybe Fugazi, early Fugazi, before they really started branching out a little bit, experimentally. I guess, but I definitely feel more melodic, hardcore-y, Husker Du-y, like Husker Du, definitely, yeah, like more Granny Apple Smith and what he would do with Sugar. And some of his solo stuff, especially if you're talking like some of the recent sort of stuff. There's definitely a lot of that going on here. I really do enjoy the sound I'm getting here, but I understand this one definitely compared to some previous records, just except for maybe certain aspects of Neanderthal, maybe, and last a little bit of last record. But this one, not is not as bouncy and as fun as the last record, but. And it seems that they definitely gone of go into the repetitiveness of the sludgier elements of the previous of previous albums. Some some bands that find this balance between the stoner and the sludge metal is the more sludge metal, but has enough stoner certain elements of stoner rock to get a certain more brighter tone and add a, give it a more full. Sometimes try to add a more bouncier or more brighter tone sound. That's, uh, but in a, in a way, their style comes off having some grungy, more grunge elements, old school grunge, definitely. This, uh, some tusks, I guess Nirvana, but not quite, but more closer in the sense of what Melvins were doing. Definitely Melvins, for sure. Definitely some Husker Doos, but some Husker Do Dinosaur Jr. and those kind of bouncy, fun, grungy elements. Those, you could definitely hear some of that in there as well. Um, this record, um... And, the, and dare I say, at least on the track on the wire, especially when you hear the beginning riffs, something comes across the way it does, very similar to Al, what Alice in Chains has been doing. And they are more alternative, more sludgy alt metal sound that they have started to do. Do as opposed to being more, well, went from being considered grunge to more sludge metal. This, well, at least more the first record, Black is Way to Blue, as opposed to the latter stuff letter stuff even though I did prefer the last outing of uh, Rainier Fog but this one I really did enjoy this record I heard a lot and I would recommend it to anyone and I would recommend it but I wouldn't recommend it as much I'd say it's thumbs up last record rocked a hell of a lot more this one's just just more of a thumbs up it's not a bad follow-up but, you know, if you really want to see where their influences are on their sleeve in a good way and in a fun way that I believe that even punk... And you definitely hear that this is definitely more catering to the sledge scene and with some shoegazer stuff. But it seems a lot of kids who are more indie, alternative punk, or hardcore kids are... This is more lenient towards you guys and is a good introductory to the, to the sludge metal scene that through those through bands of those lenses definitely coming across more with from the like I said elements in grunge more closer to the bands of the grunge shoot from grunge to shoegaze a lot more indie alternative rock traditional as well as more melodic and heavy hardcore styles uh, I wouldn't go as far as to say crust punk necessarily but Though it's not like I wouldn't say that they hadn't, especially given the more grindier bass that the last record did, but in a way that worked. 
and the, where the distorted, get fuzzier, distorted guitars and that grindier bass come together in a way that's like you hear both simultaneously and it still flows better and is just that grit and a, that level of a wall of sound to it. Uh, slide is also good. It has a, has a nice little fun sludgy riffs as well with the drums. Definitely probably one of the more complex riffs on the record, sounding riffs. But anyways, this they're good. Uh, I would definitely check out their past records. Check their first two records out. Check, uh, sure, Restart is a good check. Probably better to check them live or something, maybe. Uh, I, which I probably need to do myself. I'm also recommending this to myself, not just to you guys. So, uh, but yeah. Thumbs up. I mean... I mean, it could warm up, but I could see, but I understand if some people have, like, like most bands in the sludge scene, or even to some degree stoner metal, would find it too repetitive, uh, enough to where it, it's repeat, it grow does on you less and less in repeated listens, but it's still, but I wouldn't say the fun aspect of this band is sucked out of them at all, uh, even though you could probably have more fun with their last record, Restarter, as opposed and their first two albums, Torch and Meanderthal, to a degree. Even though they, there are other times, certain times where that track does get into some darker, heavier stuff. But it's not like they don't eventually bring. But more to kind of break, break monotony and just. But and there definitely were more instrumental tracks than actual songs. Some, uh, but the later records are definitely still a lot more fun, regardless. They've come. But if you wanted the band to be more closer into their own without completely wearing their influence out the sleeves, the restarter is a definitely a good starter. But anyways, what did you guys think about this record? Uh, I hope you enjoyed it just as much as I did. Just as much, if not even possibly more than I did. Um, and uh, I understand if some people it does with the with how this record ends it does end abrupt but it's not unpleasantly abrupt and it, and if you're listening to a CD and it goes back it just almost feels like it's trying to do it in a way that almost loops itself back around so I which I understand why they did it that way so it for that reason so yeah other than that what did you guys think of this album leave a comment below let me know as always guys keep it random keep it real keep it rocking I'll see you in the next video um take care y'all